the problem is that uh, 25 years ago, uh, I have found two very, very important sites in the south of Belgium, uh, along the Meuse River. Uh, the most river on the south of Belgium, uh, inside this very impressive uh, limestone cliff, I found in two caves uh, some human uh, remains uh, from the 9 millennium BC calibrated. And on this time, I have interpreted these discoveries as uh, collective tombs from uh, the beginning of Mesolithic, that is to say, the last uh, hunter gatherer people from the beginning of Holocene. And I have proposed also on this time that maybe there are some links, some relationships between this kind of uh, funeral practices and this one we found inside the uh, megaliths uh, from the Neolithic, the Middle Neolithic of Western uh, Europe. Uh, now I have a new interpretation of this kind of discoveries and I would like to present that you, for you today. And uh, I present first the, the, the two sides, and after a short discussions about the interpretation of this kind of discoveries. Uh, first, the localization. Uh, it's on the south of Belgium, just near the, the French border, uh, on the, along the, the, the Meuse River. And the two sides are very close. Uh, the first one, it's here inside the small ravine. Uh, Pepa Nicola to the Meuse River, and the second one along on the top of the limestone cliff, but along uh, the uh, river. You see a more picture here with a very nice castle, uh, yes, a, a Renaissance castle, uh, and the two sides are here. It's a very <coughs> impressive uh, ravine, and on the top we have found a very uh, strange cave. Uh, this cave was closed by uh, sediment during the, the beginning of the Holocene period. We found inside this uh, filling at the entrance of the cave uh, some pieces of the Bronze Age uh, come from maybe come from the plateau by uh, erosion. But this cave, the Margot Cave, it's not so so big. It's uh, 50 meters long, and on the end of this cave. Uh, on surface, it's important, on surface we have found a lot of uh, human bones. <coughs> Here we have a, a section uh, with the entrance, of, it's not the, the, the exact uh, uh, higher of the entrance at the time of the Mesolithic, uh, but because it's filled by uh, sediment from the Holocene. But here the chamber, the inner chamber is five meter high, uh, it's not so small. And uh, we have a Stalamitic floor from the Pleistocene. We have a date for this uh, floor. It's uh, 70,000 uh, BC. And the Mesolithic remains are just here on, on surface, uh, just uh, after this Stalamitic floor. Yes, so summary of the discovery, some, just some artifacts, protohistoric artifacts, and the uh, Neolithic remains here inside, that's a very important, inside a something like a structure and architecture. You have here an impression of this, this room, <coughs> excavated uh, in uh, 1985 and 86. Yeah. <coughs> uh, first one, the architecture. Uh, we have found that there are uh, a small pit, or just uh, the diameter is just one meter, uh, surrounded by, by stone in blue here on, the, on this sketch plan. And, and just close this uh, pit, surrounded by stone, we found a small parman in red. And on the top of all of the structure, uh, uh, something like, I, I speak about the closing wall, uh, it's uh, very more big stones uh, put after the use of this place uh, for the human remains. <coughs> and we found the human uh, remains majority of the human remains inside uh, the pit and the rest on the pavement. Yeah, here, distribution of the human remains. Uh, but uh, I have not drawn on this time the bones because uh, all of the bones are very, very, very small. It's just very small fragments of bones. It's very difficult to understand that. And uh, we have... Uh, uh, see different connections between the very small fragments 
and we can uh, propose that there are, um, something like a movement inside this grave. Maybe all of the bones were put first one on the pit, and after a part of them are put on the, the pavement just uh, close to this pit. But it's sure that uh, it's not a primary uh, burial. And uh, it's uh, um, 25 years ago, I've proposed that it's secondary burial. The population of this grave is very interesting because we are only adults, 10 adults, and all of them maybe are women. It's only a grave, uh, a grave uh, with uh, a wom adult woman. I see an impression of this uh, uh, grave. And uh, we have some uh, more important bones. You have a sorry. Uh, you have a skull here, uh, uh, femur. Uh, but only that concern only the last uh, woman introduced inside uh, the cave. And this last one have also has also uh, some cut marks on the zygomatic uh, bone that maybe uh, the Mesolithic would like to separate the mandible from the, the skull. The second site here, Abri uh, des Autour, Autour Rock Shelter, it's on the top of the cliff. It's a very small uh, rock shelter. Uh, you see it's uh, one meter square, look, it's three meters by 10 meters maximum. And uh, <coughs> we have found uh, Mesolithic uh, remains here on the end of this rock shelter, but also an individual uh, burial on the same time, uh, on the same period, uh, just at the entrance of the rock shelter. All of these remains of the, these burials and the collective deposits uh, are was, uh, were dated uh, of the 9 millennium BC. You have here the individual uh, grave. This grave was uh, studied by Caroline Pollet. She is in the room today. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it's a woman again. <coughs> uh, I don't insist uh, 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 on this, this discovery today because I would like especially speak about the collective deposits. It's a very strange uh, circumstance because we have again <coughs> a small pit of one meter with, with a lot of bones inside them, but only fragment of bones. We have also some very small fragments just uh, after the, the, the pit along the, the wall of the cave. And inside the crevice, the natural crevice on the wall of the cave, we have found uh, all of the phalanxes of the, the person uh, buried on this place. And here, on the south part of the, the, the cave, the north part of the cave, we have found uh, uh, bones of children. But it's very interesting that the bones of the three adults buried here belongs to three uh, persons and there, we have also bones of adults, three adults, but of three other persons, and there are no connections between the two sectors. Uh, <coughs> inside the pit, all of the, the bodies was, were uh, buried, but one of them, uh, in black here, was also uh, burned before uh, the, uh, the his introduction, its introduction inside the cave. So I have uh, organized uh, something like an explanation of the movement of the, the, the circles of this special place. You have the pit here with three adults minimum, and uh, <coughs> one of them burned. And all of these uh, adults uh, are preserved but only a fragment of bone. But these bones were broken internationally. It's very inter interesting. Here we have three other adults, but there we have only very small pieces and no complete bones. And no long bones, nothing, no skulls, nothing. Just very small pieces. And the phalanx is in the, the crevice. It's a place with the, the only place with connection of the two categories of adults and the children there. And some pieces of the six adults are mixed with the children. 
but uh, the only skull we have on this cave, of this cave is a, a, a temporal from the last uh, person bur uh, buried, in, uh, buried inside this cave. And this temporal was buried inside a small pit covered again by a wall. It seems that this kind of discoveries, are <coughs> maybe you understand that, why on this time I've, I have interpreted this Ah, okay. Uh, I have interpreted this kind of discoveries as uh, collective tombs, but now uh, I think uh, it's maybe uh, more probably a site for the treatment of the dead, because we have exactly the opposite circumstance of a secondary burial, for example. We have only the small pieces, we have only the rest that we never we found inside a secondary, a secondary burial. burial. Maybe it's just a place for the treatment of the dead, not a grave. And uh, this kind of circumstance maybe belongs of, from a long traditions. Uh, you know that during all of the Upper Paleolithic of Western Europe, we have some traces of manipulation of uh, uh, action uh, through the inside the human bones, as this one from the uh, Bac de Goulian in the Charente, the Grotte. Du placard, placard cave, uh, with this kind of sculpture of the skull. We have also a necklace in the human teeth, uh, and so on. And maybe <coughs> we have not collective uh, grave during the Mesolithic, but we have a special place for the treatment, uh, the treatment of the dead, of the bodies of the dead. And uh, in the Autour uh, rock shelter is clear that the Mesolithic have taken away all of the very important bones. Sometimes fragments of bones are broken, sometimes complete bones, all of the skull, and so on. For what? I don't know. Uh, but maybe it's the first case of a discovery of a place for the treatment uh, of the dead. And you know also that for the Western Upper Paleolithic, we know some uh, individual graves. Uh, but for all of the Upper Paleolithic, we have only uh, hundred uh, uh, graves. It's not a, it's not a lot, and uh, this one is uh, uh, used as the most uh, important example of the funeral practices for the Magdalenian. But it's the, the only case of this kind of discoveries, and the rest of the Magdalenians are known only uh, through uh, object make. Uh, in human bones, not uh, through uh, different graves. But, but uh, in Central Europe, uh, during the Upper Paleolithic, uh, we have single graves with individuals, with never uh, manipulation of the bodies, with never recuperation uh, of uh, some bones. Uh, we have a norm, normal way for the bodies, but we have very few examples of this kind of uh, funeral practice. Uh, really, do, we know nothing about the funeral practices of the Upper Paleolithic. We have just some spot, uh, f some some data, but it's not enough to interpret uh, uh, the funeral practices of this time, uh, really. But uh, before the uh, Magdalenian or Epigravetian period, uh, we have the same uh, dichotomy between, between Western and Eastern Europe. Uh, for example, here you have the discovery of the uh, Cusac grave in Charente again, uh, with deposit of human bones inside the cave, but without real inhumation, just a deposit on the surface. And at the same time, in Central Europe, in Italy, for example, you have a real uh, individual or double for multiple uh, inhumation tombs. <coughs> Look, we have in Europe maybe during the hunter gatherer uh, period, uh, we have two districts. Western part are more interested with manipulation of bones, of human bones, and in central or eastern part of Europe, they prefer uh, apparently uh, to bury it definitively uh, their dead. During the Mesolithic, we have the same situation. Uh, 
We have place for manipulation of bodies. We have place to, for the treatment of bodies. We have a lot uh, of uh, case of manipulations of body and with recuperation of some parts of the skeletons. Uh, I speak about relic. I don't know what is it exactly, but uh, we have not real uh, grave for this period. But at the same time, during the Mesolithic period, in Eastern uh, Europe, we, we found the first cemetery of Europe. This, this example is from Ukraine. But we have the same situation in the different parts uh, of Europe as here, uh, more recently for the late Mesolithic in the Scania, in the south of uh, Sweden. But we have also some uh, cemeteries, necropolis in uh, Denmark, in Netherlands, and so on. And it seems that <coughs> Uh, Western Mesolithic, it's follow the tradition of the Western Upper Paleolithic, and the rest of the Mesolithic follow the, the tradition of uh, the central and eastern part of uh, Europe. And if I have proposed 25 years ago that maybe the pseudo collective burials of the Mesolithic of Western Europe are maybe the, uh, the, the origin of the collective burials uh, during the middle Mesol Neolithic, sorry, for origin of the, the, bur the collective burial of the middle Neolithic of Western Europe, hein, inside the megaliths. Uh, today, I propose that maybe the collective uh, burial is especially a tradition for sedentary people with food production. And, uh, <coughs> but, in the megaliths, we have also a lot of manipulation of body. We have also recuperation of some bones. We have movement uh, through the bodies. Uh, maybe this only this aspect, it's a, a legacy of the, the, the previous period. And because we have a very nice continuity uh, in Europe, in Western or Eastern part, we have continuities through uh, the, uh, the relation with the body of the dead. In Western part of Europe, during Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neo Neolithic, uh, the people are interested to have pieces of the dead with them. Uh, they accept to touch the bodies, to transform the connection of the skeletons. On Central Europe or in Eastern Europe, they prefer to put the bodies inside the grave and in quiet inside his grave, it's, that's all. Uh, sure, we don't know what the, the idea of the dead on one part of or the second part of Europe, but sure, they think by another way, the relation with the dead. And uh, I know today, I, for me, it's difficult to, to explain the origin of the collective grave in the Neolithic period, but it seems that these origins uh, have a small legacy from the time of the under uh, gatherer people from the Mesolithic and maybe from the upper Paleolithic. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I'm very tired, I'm ill, and uh, I know it's not a good presentation, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah.